In the previous video, we learned about the different lifecycle hooks in Sweld. In this video, we will use the on mount hook to learn how to make a GET request on page load and render the fetched data in our Sweld component. To fetch the data, we need to have an API endpoint. For that, I will be making use of JSON placeholder. As you can see here, it is basically a free to use fake online REST API for testing and prototyping. I want the focus to be on data fetching in our Swelt application and not on creating an API. JSON placeholder saves us from having to create the API ourselves. I will leave a link to this site in the description down below. Now, if you scroll down to the routes section, you can see the possible HTTP requests you can make. For this video, I will be making a GET request to slash posts, which will fetch an array of posts to display in the UI. Let's get started. I'm going to go back to VS Code and create a new component. Within the components folder, create a new file called postlist.sweld. Let's begin with the script section. We know that we need to fetch a list of posts and render it in the UI. For that, let's declare a new variable called posts and set it to an empty array. So let posts is equal to an empty array. Next, let's make the actual API call. The place to make our API call is in the on mounted lifecycle hook. So at the top, import on mount from Svelte. And then we call the function. On mount accepts a callback function and this callback function is responsible for making the API call. Let's make this async. Within the function, we are going to use the fetch API to make a get request to the JSON placeholder API. Now to make a get request, we invoke fetch and pass in the API endpoint as its argument. So const response is equal to await fetch and back in the browser, copy the URL and paste it. All right, we are now making a get request. The fetch API returns a promise, which is why we've added the await keyword. This is nothing specific to Svelte and is simply modern JavaScript. Now once the response is retrieved, we need to convert it into a JSON format that we can use in our component. So await response.json and we assign this value to our posts variable. Let's log this post to the console to see the data that we have fetched. If we now include this postlist component in app.svelte, and head back to the browser, you should see an array logged in the console. If I expand it, you can see the list of 100 posts that have been retrieved. Each post has an ID, a title, and a body property. All that is left now is to render it in the markup. So back in VS Code, we're going to use the each block to render the list of posts. So in the markup section, each post as post and the unique key is going to be post.id. Let's also close the each block. Within the each block, inside an h3 tag, we're going to render post.id followed by post.title. Let's also add a paragraph tag and render the body, post.body. Let's add a horizontal line to separate the different posts. Save the file, go back to the browser, and you should be able to see the list of posts are fetched from the API and displayed in the browser. 
The blue color, of course, is from our styles video where we styled the H3 tag. Now let me also mention another cool feature about the each block. Between the opening and closing line of the each block, we can add an else block which automatically renders if the data source length is zero. So we can add curly braces, else, and a paragraph tag that says loading. Now back in the browser, we can head over to the network tab and set the speed to slow 3G, refresh, and you can see the loading text till the API call completes and the data is fetched. Pretty neat if you ask me. So this is pretty much how you make an HTTP request in Svelte. Let me explain how this complete process happens as it is really important to understand. When the component initializes, the posts variable is set to an empty array and the onMount hook is executed. At this point, the post array is empty and the markup renders the loading text. In the background, the fetch API sends an HTTP request to the JSON placeholder endpoint. The data is fetched and assigned to the posts array. If the component state updates, the component will re-render. The posts property contains 100 items which we iterate over using the each block and in each iteration we bind the post ID, title and the body to the markup which is then rendered in the browser. So you have successfully used the onMount lifecycle hook for making HTTP requests. In the next video, let's look at another practical usage of the onMount lifecycle hook. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.